people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. As the debate around hydrogen-powered vehicles becomes heated with the world's most powerful automakers weighing in with their competing claims, India has set out to incorporate this green alternative to its fleet of alternate fuel sources. The government's support, coupled with industry's excitement to manufacture non-conventional energy-driven vehicles, is paving way for a green brand India already on course to achieve its net-zero goals. Come with us as we explore India's hydrogen power plants and how she plans to achieve her green goals. Tesla CEO and one of the world's most outspoken and influential personalities, Elon Musk, raised eyebrows when he said that hydrogen-powered vehicles were a poor idea to pursue. While Musk remains dismissive and skeptical of hydrogen power, other industry leaders and influential voices are more optimistic and hopeful. Many major auto manufacturers have not only committed to adding hydrogen components to their future enterprises, but many are also ready with at least one production-ready model. Toyota, Hyundai and Honda are three of the major global automobile brands that have manufactured and sold hydrogen cars. These manufacturers are extensively involved in research and design to further explore and to enhance their efficiency. While hydrogen vehicles still trail massively behind electric cars in the current marketplace, some believe that they have the potential to give electric cars a run for their money once the debate around their efficiency settles. According to MarketWatch, a capital market company, China alone will manufacture around a million hydrogen-powered vehicles by 2035, while Japan aims to have 800,000 vehicles within the next eight years. So, where does India stand on hydrogen and green hydrogen power? India, one of the fastest emerging economies with the net zero target in sight, has been pushing for alternate fuels and has expressed its willingness to embrace hydrogen time and time again. India's Road, Transport and Highway Minister, Nitin Gagkari in particular, has advocated for the adoption of green hydrogen technology. Actually, it is easy to get hydrogen from coal, but that is black hydrogen. The hydrogen from petroleum that is brown hydrogen, but we need green hydrogen. Hydrogen from biomass, hydrogen from water, hydrogen from organic waste. And the wasteland where we will protect our environment and that bamboo can be used for making green hydrogen. Some say that because of India's enormous potential to generate green hydrogen, New Delhi can become the market leader. As per a report by the government of India's think tank, Niti Aayog, India, with the contribution of private players, can achieve 25 gigawatts of manufacturing capacity of electrolyzers by 2028. The same report said that green hydrogen can help India abate 3.6 gigatons of cumulative CO2 emissions by 2050. Therefore, it is crucial for both the Indian government and private players to explore green hydrogen options to manufacture vehicles. Morris Garages, or MG, a British origin company, unveiled India's first ever hydrogen car at the recently held annual Auto Expo Fair in the national capital region. Hydrogen technology is one among many technologies, including electric and solar, that have been striving to make inroads in the huge, untapped, non-conventional, energy-driven automobile market in the country. 
MG Motors India affirmed that they were ready to mass produce hydrogen vehicles and were waiting for the government's go ahead. Hydrogen showcases our technology, which is the fuel cell technology prowess, which is applicable to some of the applications, and this is one of the applications. Uh, though it's not a concept car, it's a production ready vehicle. So this technology is available, obviously commercially it's very, very uh, pricey at this point of time. Uh, you know, so, so commercial applications are not going to be at a mass level at this point of time. But the point is that depending on the government direction, depending on the future, uh, this, these kind of applications can be made available. The demand, consumption, and production of automobiles has risen sharply in recent times. As per various sources of market data, Indians bought a record 3.8 million cars in 2022, and observers say the market will see a sharp rise in the demand for alternate fuel-run cars in immediate years. Hydrogen cars, along with electric cars, would be viable options. A number of studies have already declared hydrogen-powered technology safe and efficient. As per the U.S. Department of Energy, the fuel cell electric vehicles, or FCEV, are more efficient than conventional internal combustion engine vehicles, as they only emit water vapor and warm air and produce no tailpipe emissions. A green India that thrives on alternative energy sources is not a far-fetched dream. The country has the potential to become a green global leader. The political will and the effective implementation and execution by automakers can ensure that India drives green and that brand India achieves its net zero target. Moving on. Taliban's strict measures are taking a toll on Afghans in more ways than anybody had previously imagined. The recent diktats banning women from tertiary education, healthcare and humanitarian organizations has triggered a political furor world over. While condemnations are continuously pouring in, Cricket Australia took a major call by calling off bilateral cricket series with Afghanistan. Cricket has become widely popular in the country of late and the fans said they were deeply disappointed with the recent turn of events that led to the calling off of the series. A wave of disappointment has spiraled over Afghanistan with cricket fans at the centre. Following Cricket Australia's call to cancel its bilateral series with Afghanistan, following the Taliban's decision to impose a sweeping ban on participation of women in public discourse. As they played on a stony, snowy surface in Kabul, Afghan cricketers expressed disappointment that they would not be able to watch a highly anticipated series against Australia, who withdrew due to concerns about women's rights. Following additional restrictions on women's and girls' rights enforced by radical Islamist Taliban government, Australia's men's squad withdrew from the three-match one-day international series that was scheduled to be staged in March in the United Arab Emirates. Afghanistan has a passionate and sizable cricket fan base despite decades of conflict and suffering. Australia and Afghanistan were supposed to play a test match in November 2021. However, the match was cancelled when the Taliban took control of the country in August of that year. Since then, the Taliban have shut down the majority of girls' high schools and in December, they issued orders forbidding female staff members at NGOs and universities alike from working until further notice. Salesman Nurullah Amiri expressed his sadness about the cancellation but expressed hope that the Taliban will soon permit all girls to enroll in school and universities. Dear Lagnas, dear Ziat, Mung Sekala Musabi Kai Pagawras is Kartan Uz, Puswi, Karnako, Rede Magasikinone, Ganamal Nadaki, Kartan Uz. No, but Dieta Mung Patamu Agasikin Salsu, Dario, Bad Karus. 
No country has formally recognized the administration of the Taliban, who took over Afghanistan with a speed and ease that took the world by surprise. When the Taliban first came into control between 1996 and 2001, they primarily outlawed girls' education. The Afghanistan Cricket Board has criticized Australia's decision, saying it had put political interests over sportsmanship and that cricket had contributed to education and social development in the country. Cricket Australia Chief Executive Nick Hockley defended the decision, saying basic human rights are not politics. Moving on. A couple of months back, the IMF called India a bright spot on the dark horizon. The World Bank recently upgraded India's growth forecast. The Reserve Bank of India is assured that India will continue to accomplish her fiscal goals and experts across the board have expressed confidence in the country's current macroeconomic policy. With just a few exceptions, the Indian economy has broadly recovered since the pandemic outbreak and will continue to march towards its goal of a developed economy by 2047, as most of the economic indicators predict a prolonged purple patch for the country. Let's understand a little more about the Indian economy and also see how the government is planning to provide even a greater push through its upcoming budget. <music> With a V-shaped recovery following pandemic shocks, India's run of success continues and her economy is anticipated to repeat a similar growth trajectory in 2023. The World Bank's revision of Indian GDP growth projections from 6.4% to 6.9% in the current fiscal year is one among the many affirmations Indian policies and reforms have received in recent times. The World Bank India's country director, August Tano Kwame, credited India's strong macroeconomic fundamentals for the remarkably resilient economy. According to the Government of India's own projections, India will register a growth of 7% in the 2022-2023 financial year. This is no small feat considering that many countries world over are grappling with multifaceted economic headwinds. The country's nominal GDP is also estimated to grow by 15.4%. Economists say the government's policy reforms, the most affected being the Production-Linked Incentive Scheme PLI, and the PM Gati Shakti, have proven instrumental in achieving favorable results for the Indian economy. Production-Linked Incentives are very useful to increase manufacturing exports but absolutely no doubt that it will be a huge part of the shift of manufacturing from a concentrated region of the world to India and other places. And India will be a huge beneficiary of such policies. India has successfully balanced welfare schemes and infrastructure expansion. India was able to ensure food security for millions of families, especially since the pandemic outbreak while the country's hard infrastructure has witnessed a total transformation in the past few years. The construction of expressways at a record pace, coupled with new freight corridors, are set to accelerate the pace of the already flourishing brand India. India's goal is to reduce her logistics costs by 6 percentage points, from 14% to 8% in the next five years. This would ensure that logistics play the role of a growth engine in the Indian economy. Improved logistics will add to India's improved image as an investment destination, thanks to efforts at easing foreign direct investment rules. India is expected to receive, for the first time ever, 100 billion USD in foreign direct investment this financial year. From renewable energy to real estate, from fintech to automobiles, and from healthcare to hospitality, Indian sectors across the board are poised to take big leaps in times to come. Already we are seeing FDI in investment in India is rising. Renewable energy is a big part for, for foreign direct investment, which will also wean off India of imported hydrocarbons, as well as help the environment. Similarly, on the data side, 5G, 
remote working which can lead to more services exports experts say india's balanced fiscal approach of major infrastructural development coupled with economic reforms will provide the country with the great momentum needed to accomplish its economic goals many predict that india will become one of the most sought after markets in the world India is on track to become the world's third largest economy in under a decade from now. For a five years from now, we're very confident we'll be the third largest economy. India has also set the target of becoming a developed country by 2047. In order to meet this goal, the Indian economy will have to consistently grow at an average rate of around 8% per annum. Some financial bodies have forecast that India will also be affected next year by global recessionary trends. However, the Indian economy was not predicted to have rebounded from the pandemic as quickly as it had. Brand India cannot be counted out. Sustained integrated efforts by the government, private players, organized and unorganized sectors and firms big and small have ensured India's steady progression the indian economy has defied past pandemic predictions brand india is not on path to slow down time now for asia this week the stories from across the continent Families of Indonesian children who died as a result of contaminated cough syrup demanded compensation as an Indonesian court started hearing their class action lawsuit against the governmental organizations and pharmaceutical companies. Authorities in Indonesia have reported that two chemicals, ethylene glycol and diethylene glycol, included in various syrup-based paracetamol treatments are linked to almost 200 pediatric acute kidney damage deaths since last year. The two ingredients are used in antifreeze, brake fluids and other industrial applications but also as a cheaper alternative in some pharmaceutical products to glycerin, a solvent or thickening agent in many cough syrups. They can be toxic and can lead to acute kidney injury. 25 families are suing the health and finance ministries, the drugs regulator and at least 8 drug companies. Authorities have banned several cough syrups and mounted legal action against several pharmaceutical companies whose products allegedly contained the dangerous ingredients. Japanese citizens have started thronging various shrines and temples as the Japanese New Year has officially begun. Omikyuji are fortune-telling papers that predict future. Shishihu Kyujin are seven lucky gods of good luck. Witnessing these scenes during Japanese New Year is quite a common sight. During the month of January in 2023, many people visited the Sensoji Temple in Asakusa, Tokyo to pay their New Year's visit. Due to the coronavirus, the number of visitors to Sensoji Temple for Hatsumode has reduced. Hatsumode is the first visit to a shrine or temple in New Year. This is a traditional Japanese New Year's event. People are thankful for the past year and pray for a safe and peaceful year ahead. <laughs> Visitors to Japanese shrines and temples can draw an omikyuji. Omikyuji is often drawn to predict good or bad luck. Basically there is a range from great luck to bad luck. In Japan many people have had their jobs affected by the coronavirus for the past 3 years. Many Chinese people come to Hatsumode wearing Japanese kimonos and westerners enjoy the scenery at Japanese temples and shrines. We also yeah. want to do experience the culture and yeah. we've been wanting to come for a long time. We were really excited. In Japan people can now move freely. Many people can be seen praying for a prosperous new year.
Japan is a popular tourist destination around the world. Beautiful picturesque sceneries and architectural wonders such as Mount Fuji and Kyoto are visited by many tourists from around the world. Last October, Japanese government decided to promote travel to domestic travel and ease the entry of foreign tourists. The tourism business in Japan is picking up pace in 2023. In the new year 2023, it is crowded, with tourists in Tokyo flocking the Imperial Palace, Tokyo Station made of bricks and the sky tree of the 634-meter-high observation tower. These are so popular spots for tourists at Tokyo. It's an incredible, Tokyo is an incredible city. Yeah, it's, uh, it's much bigger than what I'm used to back home, but uh, the people are very friendly and very welcoming. The people here are very safe with their masks and, and take a lot of very good precautions, and I feel perfectly safe here. The downtown area of Tokyo is called Ginza. There are luxury brand stores and large department stores. The pedestrian paradise event, which had been cancelled in COVID-19, resumed last year. During the weekend and national holidays, the road is open for visitors. After COVID is getting better, I just came back to Japan to like um, shopping and eat good food. I mean, I love sushi and chabu and everything. So I just came back to visit Japan again. So, yep, that's uh, my purpose of the visit. I feel great. Everything is getting back to normal, right? I mean, uh, I love seeing people walking on the street, uh, a lot of people on the street now. So it's good to be back here. The worldwide tourism industry in Japan is energized by the rebound in inbound travel. Moving on, last week was the annual harvest season festivity week in India. People across the country celebrated this year's agricultural produce under different regional names and expressed gratitude to the sun, also considered a deity in Hinduism for the same. We bring you one such festivity, Pongal. Celebrated in the southern part of the country, Pongal holds a unique cultural heritage that has been in existence for hundreds of years. The zeal and revelry during the festival is a sight to watch. Have a look. It is no usual morning in Trichy, an ancient town in India's southern Tamil Nadu, where the air is thick with excitement and anticipation. An exclusive colourful event of cultural rituals is set to follow later in the day. People have decorated their homes with mesmerising artworks. A rangoli outside each one of them has set the tone for the festival of fervour and revelry. Families could be seen preparing for the festival in their courtyards. The preparation of rice and earthen pot decorated with flowers is the most important aspect of the festival. People pray and thank Surya, the sun god, for the bountiful harvest. People say overflowing rice and milk symbolize profusion of good luck, prosperity and optimistic future. It's believed that this four-day festival brings harmony and peace in people's lives. It is a basically a harvest festival. It is celebrated for four days in the midday of Tamil Nadu, the January every year. First day we celebrated Pogi Pongal and second day we celebrated Surya Pongal and third day we celebrated Matu Pongal and Kanu Pongal. It is celebrated to thank for the God, Sun God and Lord Indra for helping the former. This adoring view is of Rameshwaram, another town in Tamil Nadu. Devotees are bathing in holy Agni Tirtham Sea. With the belief that taking a dip in the sea washes away sins, devotees from all over the world reach the site to celebrate Pongal on its shores. Huge crowds of pilgrims are visiting Sri Ramanatha Swami Temple. It is believed that shivling present at this Rameshwaram temple were brought here by Ravana from Kailash Parbat. Around 400 kilometers away in Coimbatore, people perform indigenous dance forms to narrate the folklore associated with the festival. 
people say the devotion quotient is so high during the performance that they do not feel any pain even during dancing bare feet. We used to uh, depict all the traditional uh, cultures here. So today also, uh, Oil atom, kumi atom, like that. Uh, the traditional, the uh, cultures have been depicted uh, for the benefit of the youngsters. Another aspect of the festival, the most thrilling one, is jelly kattu. The bull taming festival, when people try to control bulls and pluck away prizes, usually attached to their sharpened horns. Quintessential to the culture of the land, Jalikattu is enjoyed by one and all. Pongal is fundamentally an inclusive festival when people from all age groups can equally enjoy different aspects of the festival. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.